Well, hello, everybody. I'm super excited to share Desmos with you. And the first thing I want you to know is it's not a math tool. Okay, it's totally a math tool, but we're going to pretend that it's not. I mean, it's a tool. You like put your answer in here. Well, I could put history or science or English or anything. So I have created this Desmos activity with no math in it at all. There's no math, friends, none. And then I'd like to show you how you can make one of these yourself. Desmos is so awesome because, you know what, I can have kids put their answers into boxes and a whole bunch of platforms. But what's really unique about Desmos is I can see everybody's responses at once. I can share individual responses and we have conversations around them. And I really think it's a great conversation tool. And for that reason, I would like you to use it no matter what you teach. So I am going to do my screen share here. So what you should be looking at is I have two screens that you can see and I've locked them. So you're only able to answer the first and the second screen. But I actually have 16 screens. Don't freak out about that. Most of them are just like directions, right? So I'm going to put my name below and I submit. So now it says, welcome, Alice. Uh, that is not built in where it switches to saying your name. I was playing around today. So like with many things, there's how to use it at a basic level and there's how to use it at an Alice level. So we get advanced because um, it lets you code. So I learned how to take the input and have it give a response. Now, is that a math thing? No. You can see you put your name in there and then throughout this activity, I have a couple of places where it remembers what your name was and continues to call you by your name. That would be fun if you learned how to do that, but that is not what we're covering today. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the next screen. There's a next button up at the top. So you are seeing this as a student. This is student view right here, and this is the card sort. So what I have is some different pictures. And then I have Spanish speaking and not Spanish speaking. So I'd like you to find the pattern and group. So it's Spanish speaking, not Spanish speaking, um, Spanish. I know all the answers, you guys. Uh, Brazil is not Spanish speaking. Wild part of South America, Suriname is not Spanish speaking. And Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory but it is Spanish speaking. Okay, so I can see that you all have been participating. So let me show you what this looks like on teacher view. So I'm gonna present now, I'm gonna do a window, this one. So this is the teacher dashboard in Desmos. And what you can see is that I have your names on the side and you're like, my name is not Kurt. That's correct because you'll see up here in the upper left, that it says anonymize. So I have turned on anonymize so I can share responses without putting anybody out. Oh, Karen, hi, here's the link. I put it in the chat for you. If you wanna join the activity. Do you see how I have the screens along the top? It's like Google Slides, except instead of on the left side, it is along the top. And those orange border around those first two, I have, done pacing. So you see here where it says pacing. And I'm like, we're going to do this together. So I'm going to stop. And I'm going to click on the third screen. So right now I've stopped pacing that allows you to move around however you want. And then I'm going to turn on pacing on this third screen. And it's going to force you all to be on the third screen. All right now I'm going to present this in student view. I wanted to do a tab. Hey Christine, welcome. Okay, my tab. What happened to my tab? Everyone, oh there it is, found it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm getting old. All right, so you see I have this nice input box. What state do you think? has the largest population. For those of you just joined, here's the link to the activity in the chat. 
And you can see, no, you can't see because that's the student view. So I'm going to switch back here. Humor me, you guys. I have two different accounts going so that I can show you student view versus teacher view and that it would show up on the recording. So in teacher view, I'm back at the dashboard. And on the dashboard, you see that I can see what everyone's responses is. So we have one person says New York, one person says Texas, California. I do have these anonymized. So it just gives you a famous person's name. And I have it set on pacing to force you to be on the screen that I am on. I can also pause it so we can stop, have a chat before I resume and allow you to answer. Now, along the top, you'll see that I have summary, which gives me this lovely grid of what question and who answered what, well, rather, who answered and if they got it right or wrong. So if it has grading features, it'll put a check mark on there. So you see here, I'm going to come back to screen two. I can see this lovely grid of everyone's card sort response, and I see Johan got several of them wrong. Catherine didn't get started, right? They, they haven't matched up any of them. So it just gives me this lovely overview of how the students are doing, all right? So I can do an overview or see the responses. If I click on student, it shows me the student view so that I can screen share and demo like, this is what you're supposed to be doing is what the screen looks like. And then you can do snapshots. So when I'm on this one here, I'm gonna switch to teacher. So I'm gonna snapshot what John said. I'm gonna snapshot with one Sue said. And then I switch up here to snapshot. So these are answers that I got from students. And I just drag the student answers that I want so that I can present. So now I'm presenting student responses. So we had several of you said California and several of you said New York. And again, this is a conversation tool. So by pacing it, doing snapshots, pausing the activity, and then we all have conversations around student responses. I just love that I can see, I go back to teacher, I can see everybody's response. I'm gonna click this little arrow and we're gonna move to the next screen. So I have another card sort and I'm gonna switch to student so this I can demonstrate what it looks like. You have all of these states and I wanna know for the population of each state, which ones have less than 5 million and which ones have more than 5 million. And so I don't know why, I, I typed in all 50 of these. And then after I did that, I realized that was too many. It really didn't take me that long though. It's really easy to make. I literally did this just a little bit ago and then I'm like, this is too many, less than for Alice. But I have one card that says more than 5 million and one card that says less than 5 million. And so you can just guess Louisiana, more than 5 million, less than 5 million. Go ahead and put them in there. I'm going to click on teacher, and I can see that, that when Sue is not getting these right, Kurt's got two of them right. There we go, when Sue. Okay. Do an overview. Most common incorrect groupings, most common incorrect cards. Mm. See how handy that is? This isn't math. I have no math examples. This one's a little crazy. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. For those of you who joined late, I have put the link to the activity in the chat. And so then I am going to go to the next screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit pacing because it's going to force all of you to be on this screen with me. So now we're all doing this together. You can let use Desmos and assign it to be self-paced and independent. And again, I can go back to that summary screen and I get this nice grid to see who participated on what screens. I click on teacher and I can see sample student answers. 
According to the Rasmussen poll, who was the most popular president? I can compare your answers against the answer key. So I just want you to see, not math. We have many reasons in every subject to want to sort, rank, just put your answer in an answer box. So Desmos is just a really great tool for not math teachers. All right, I'm going to move on to the next screen. So I'm going to use that little arrow to paste you to the next one. Who are the protagonists and the antagonists in the story, Weathering Heights? If I click on student at the very top, I can see what the students would be looking for. So I have a protagonist card. Who or what do I match that up with? Who's the protagonist? Hindley, is he the protagonist, the antagonist, or neither? So this is the book Weathering Heights, which I particularly enjoy. Jane Eyre is my favorite book. And I'm going to switch to teacher so I can get an overview of how everyone's doing. So I have this great grid. John Wallace is tearing it up. Of course, these aren't your real names. Johan's struggling. Doesn't have any of them correct. Gertrude's giving it a go. I'm going to go ahead and click on Gertrude, and I can see what Gertrude is responding. Now, this is anonymized, right? It's anonymized. So I don't have to call Gertrude out, whoever this is. I'm able to share this. You can give feedback during the lesson to people if you want, and you can show the answer key. Look how fun that is. So right down there. And so this is Gertrude's sample. Like This is what Gertrude, this student, has posted. And while I have gone and clicked on teacher, I look at the grid, then I can click on anybody in particular to see their responses, and then I can compare it against the answer key. And if I was projecting this, which right now I am, this allows me to engage in conversations with anonymized student names. Do we have any questions? All right, I'm going to go and feel free, stop me anytime. Okay, I really struggled on this one. I tried to find a chemistry card sort that I could just copy off of the internet so you could see an example. And the only point for this is, look, it's not math. You can do it with English. You can do it with science. You can do it with world languages. And it's just sorting and categorizing, which is a DOK2 level skill. How great is this? And not only do I have my students sorting and categorizing, I can, of course, on the teacher dashboard, click on teacher and see how they're doing in real time. I can also assign this asynchronous. So we right now we're doing it together. I don't have to do that. Questions? Feel free to put them in the chat to unmute. They're pretty fun, right? And if I just click back on summary, I'm going to get a little dot to show who's participating. Gertrude got this one right. See, he's got a checkbox because I put an answer key in there. I know you like this. I made all of these, Marsha. I, and it really, honestly, this whole thing only took me a couple of minutes because Desmos is so easy. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the next screen because the point of this is not to do the activities, but to see what kinds of activities you can do in Desmos. I'm going to toggle to student. I have these buttons up at the top on the teacher dashboard, and I am asking you to explain what makes something a chemical change. So you're going to be able to put in your response box, and notice I'm not asking for math. Okay, I'm asking for science, but it's just a box, and you can put anything in there literally. Any grade level, they can read and write, can do this. I'm going to switch to teacher. So John Wallace has the makeup of something. So I'm going to take a few of these sample answers, and I'm going to do a snapshot. And at the very top, I'm going to toggle over to snapshots. 
I'm toggling over here. So you see a snapshot, summary, teacher, student on my teacher dashboard. And then I've got these snapshots that I took. The ones that I want to share, I'm going to drag them and present. I'm going to drag them and present. And so now we're able to talk about which one do you agree with? What do you like? All right, I'm going to go to the next one. So what we are going to do now is you are going to make your own Desmos activity. And we do that by going to teacher.desmos.com. I have a few screens here. I'm going to stop forcing you to pace with me. So these screens I have are screenshots of how to do it, but then I'm going to demo it with you live. So let me just go through these real quick, and then we're just going to do one together. And you'll be like, it's really that easy, and it is really that easy. So I'm going to go to the next one, and what we're going to do is after you log in at teacher.desmos.com, you log in with your Google account, and on the left-hand side, you're going to find custom. And under custom is where you can customize and make your own activities. Now, if you search for activities on Desmos, you're going to find math. That's not what we're doing. So we're going to customize and make our own. After you customize and make your own, then we'll manage your classes. So you can create a class. You don't have to do it with Google Classroom, but if you have one, it will sync with your Google Classroom. But we are going to click New Activity under Custom. All right, and then it gives you this nice little panel on the side where you can add notes. That's your teacher notes versus text input. It's a box, student, put something in the box. I know you all know what that means. We're not, we're gonna skip the math input, but you could ask a multiple choice question. You could do a check boxes question. You could do an ordered list question. Like, that's pretty obvious. Literally just click it and add them in there. And then there's a plus icon at the top of your film strip at the top, so you can add multiple screens. So you see, that's what we did tonight, is I gave you a little taste of what it looks like as we go through multiple screens. And then if you go all the way to the bottom on the left side of the different elements that you can add to your activity that you're creating, at the bottom is card sort. Now card sort is a full screen activity. The other ones, I can put like a picture and a note and an input box, multiple choice, but the card sort needs all of the room, just so you know. So sometimes what I do is I add a screen with the directions, and then the next screen is the card sort. So once you start the card sort, there's a button that says, puts a text box. And so you're making cards of text, or you make cards with an image, oops, right? Make cards with text or an image, we're not gonna do graph. It says answer key, and you literally just drag it the way you wanna match them up to set the answer key. It is wicked easy. And then you just wanna hit publish so you can then assign it to your students. Okay, so before we get going, any questions? All right, let's do it together. You're going to go to teacher.desmos.com, teacher.desmos.com. So you want to click on the link where you want to go there. You are going to want to sign in in the upper right-hand corner. I am logged in as my PD account, as you can see. So I'll wait a second because if this is your first time, you're going to need to set it up. If you could give me a thumbs up or just an okay in the chat. Let me know that you're ready to move on, that you are signed in. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, thanks, Peter. Tina, you signed in? Okay, on the left side, you see where it says custom? We're gonna click on custom on the left-hand side. And in the upper right, it says new activity. So uh, thanks, Terry. On the left side, it says custom. And in the upper right, it says new activity. So I just click new activity. I'm going to name it. And you can make it private if you want to. And create a new activity. Oh, also, you can add a co-teacher to your dashboard so you can have multiple teachers using the same activity. 
which is cool. So it should just open up to the activity builder. And you can type on here, welcome student. And then we have on the left side things that we want to just stick in there. I make a note, draw me a cat. And then I'm going to insert sketch. And you see these little grippies, I'm going to, I can move the tiles around. So I want them to draw me a cat and I used the sketch option because why not? Now up at the top, it says preview. So I'm going to preview what does this look like for my students. It says draw me a cat and they have a box to draw me a cat. You know you all want this. You want this. Like draw me something. That's fun. And it's literally as easy as I put a note, which is my instructions, and I pushed, uh, excuse me, we're not doing graph because we're not doing math. No math today. We just said, draw me a cat. We're just going to do something. How are you feeling today? And then up at the top, you'll see that there is this plus icon that you can add a new screen. So what do you want on that first screen? You're going to welcome the student. What do you want them to do at the very first screen? And then you're just going to click the plus icon to make another screen. So on there, I can, all of these elements that you can see on the left, the note, the text input, skipping the math, multiple choice, text box, ordered list, skipping the graph, sketch, media, table, they, you can put more than one on a screen. So I'm going to put a note. And I want them to think about how tall mountains are. I'm going to add sketch for them to draw me a mountain. And then I'm going to do text input. Christine, don't worry about action button. That would be for the computation layer that you have to learn how to code. So that's not our intro activity. <laughs> so I'm just glossing over that for now. I'm going to do text input, which is just an answer box. And by default, it says show students their classmates' responses. It doesn't show them everybody's. It gives them like three. So after they answer, it gives them three sample answers so they can compare their response to student responses. You can add media. I'm going to put in there somewhere I've got a bitmoji. Where'd they go? I don't know. This is not a bitmoji. I just had a picture. I literally just dragged it in. Did it load? Drag it in. Liter just I only did this 500 times a few minutes ago. It's just slow and I was going to like freak out. I'm going to click on preview. The kids can draw me a mountain. They can put in some words. For some reason, I cannot get this picture to upload. Click on a file. Fine. There. I did this a whole bunch of times earlier, and I had no issues. So I'm sure it's just my bandwidth. Preview. You can see I have the picture. I have my text. I have this place for them to draw, which is pretty cool. And then I'm going to click the plus icon. I'm going to add another screen. And down at the bottom, I'd like you to choose card sort. Card sort. So my point here is, you know, you can add this card sort screen. It can, it can just be a one screen activity. It can just be the card sort. But isn't it kind of nice that you can build a whole activity, a whole lesson where they can input text, they can answer questions, and they can do this DOK level two card sort. So I'm just going to click on card sort on the left side. And I click math or text. So I'm going to um, rock, not a rock. I don't know why I'm choosing this. I'm a math teacher, so I'm going to struggle here. There's not math things that you can do? Mm, of course there is. So I usually start with how I want to categorize them. The images do have to be downloaded, Christine. So like when I do my Bitmoji, I write, I mean, and I do it on the fly. I right click, I download the Bitmoji, save as. And then because it downloads right into that bar at the bottom, I just drag it from the bar at the bottom into the image box. So let me show you. 
Um, I don't think you can see my Bitmoji. Maybe you can, but I'm going to right click. I'm going to save the image and it downloads right here to the bar at the bottom. And then I click on image card and I just drag the Bitmoji right into the image card. It's wicked easy. Now to make that chemistry one, um, the physical or chemical change, uh, I use screenshots. I, screen, I used a screenshot tool and I dragged it from my screenshot tool right onto the card. And then the one for the, uh, the maps that I had like Spain and Portugal, I went to images.google.com and I had two windows side by side. And then the Google images, I just right click and I save the image as it downloads it. And then I just drag it right over into the, and you can drag from one window to another window right into the card sort. So I didn't download them in advance. I downloaded them as I was building. How do you do an exponent? Well, that would be math. So if I'm on this card and you wanted math, you see it has the math icon. And so I will do five square root of three. Oh, you wanted an exponent plus x. I use the caret on the six key, so it's shift six, which is the standard that you use in spreadsheets and more advanced calculators is using that symbol right there. Clarissa, I promise no math. Killing me smalls, right? I'm trying to keep people here. Don't, don't run away. Literally as easy as I click the math or text, Big rock, math or text, round rock. I can add images, I can add text. And then when I click on answer key, I literally like Bitmoji, not a rock. So I ma match it. A round rock is a rock. A big rock is a rock. And this math is not a rock. Right? And so I sort the activities. You don't have to have the label at the top, but I like to. And you see how easy it is to drag and set the answer key. And I'm done, you guys. That's all I have to do. So I added a screen. I went to the bottom. I clicked on card sort. I added some things. Math. Not math. I add an image. I can drag the image in. Or I can click to upload. And then I go to answer key. And I just match it and I hit done and I'm done. So all that's left is to click publish. So I'm going to go ahead and publish it and I'm all set. Students can, yes, Peter, they can upload an image as an answer, but you're going to have to go to in your account in the upper right where it says Desmos Labs. You're going to need to go to the labs and turn on because it's in beta the student image upload. So students can upload screenshots and things, but you have to turn it on in the settings. I am gonna to go to my custom here. I have my sample. And you'll see what I have is it says assign. Now I've already created my classes. So over on the left side where it says manage classes, you can add a new class and it can be a Desmos class or Google Classroom class, or both. I usually do both. And on custom, I find my activity, and I just choose assign to my classes. Or what I did with you guys is I did a single session code. So you don't have to, you don't have to have classes set up. You can just get a single session code. And like I shared the link with you, and you were able to join. You can do that with students. I like to assign it because then it captures their name. I know who they are. I know who's supposed to be in there and didn't join, but you don't have to. It was, it is that simple. So, questions. I hope that you will use this. It's, it is really powerful. And we're just getting, just, today my goal is to convince you that you realize that it is not a math tool, even though it is a math tool. Hey, Marsha. Marsha made a UDL activity to help teachers understand UDL, which, which they have 
It is screen reader friendly usually. And they do ask that when you add images and things that you do add the alt text for the screen readers. Some of the activities are things are not screen reader accessible, but most of them are. No questions? Were you able to make one? Oh, Clarissa, by the way, it's no problem. I was making jokes. You, of course, can ask me math questions. Okay, good. I am doing one on math. We're doing math, creating math activities tomorrow, Clarissa. So I hope you'll join for that one. And all my examples will be math. Today, none of my examples are math. Lisa, have I convinced you? Are you going to try it? Okay, excellent. Sorry, I was muted. I, I'm thinking it might fit with something I'm doing tomorrow, so. Yay, and you can just keep it simple and have one screen card sort. But what I'm trying to convince you all, not math teachers, is like, it's so easy to put a text input box and, and you can build up a whole lesson on it as well. Is there a limit to how many you can create on the free account? Oh, there's, there is no paid account. Okay. It is all free all the time. The only thing that's not free is math, which is not what we're doing tonight. <laughs> uh, they have middle school curriculum and they sell the curriculum. So okay. the Desmos tool itself is 100% free. All the Desmos activities are free except for their very specific, really awesome middle school grade six through eight curriculum. And that's like 20 bucks a kid. Uh, but other than that, they, they can't, you couldn't give them your money. So. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. I missed your question. I'm going to come up to these three dots. I'm going to edit my activity. Which, by the way, if you hit publish and then you assign it to a class and then you go and edit it, the students that are assigned the activity will not get the edits unless you assign it to them again with a new code. Heads up. So I'm going to go ahead and add a screen and I'm going to add a card sort. And you'll see here on the left side that it says answer key. So when I add my math, not math, graph, y equals 4x minus 2. What? I just added math. Okay, so then I go to answer key. I take the cards and I drag them together. And that's it. I just do the matching myself. I, as the teacher, do the activity like I'm a student. And that's how you set the answer key. Isn't that lovely? I think it's quite lovely. And then, of course, I want to publish. Now, if I'd already made an activity, uh, they the activity is copied. So any edits that I make won't show up in the previous activity. But the next time I assign it, they will. All right, friends, I hope that that was helpful and gets you started. There's certainly so much more we can do, but let's keep it simple. And you can just tomorrow do an easy card sort without getting nuts and give it a try. Yeah? Good night.